A very good day to all of you and welcome to a new lesson in science. Today's lesson is about where do plants and animals live and the objective of our lesson is to explain where do plants and animals live. So let's go! Have you ever wondered before, where do plants and animals live? We have so many kinds of plants and animals in this world. And these plants and animals can survive in the same places. Plants and animals live in places that have the things they need. Some plants and animals live in forests some of them live in deserts, some other animals live in ponds, and some live in oceans. In this picture right here, we can see some kinds of different animals that live in a forest. So the forest is their habitat. In the slides that will follow, we are going to explore more about where do plants and animals live and we will discover together different habitats. So let's go! To learn more about where do plants and animals live, let's open up page 108 where we will learn now about the desert habitat. So a desert is a dry place. Each desert is a system, and plants and animals are part of this system. So the desert has everything they need to live and grow. In this picture, we can notice some kinds of plants and some kinds of animals. And our question is to circle each desert animal. So, Let's circle the rabbit and let's circle the lizard. The other part of our question is to put an X on each desert plant. So let's put an X on this flower right here and let's put an X on the cactuses. So these plants and animals live in the desert. The, the desert is their habitat. Moving on to page 110 in our science book, where we will discover another interesting habitat, which is the forest. A forest is where many trees grow. A forest is a system. Plants and animals are parts of this system. The forest has everything they need. And in this picture right here, we notice a forest. And inside this forest, we can see some plants and animals. And our question is to circle each forest animal. So, we are going to circle the picture of the bear and the picture of a hummingbird. Both the bear and the hummingbird have everything they need in the forest. And that's why the forest is their habitat. It is where they live. And now let's move on to pages 111 and 112 in our science book where we are going to talk about a nice experiment which you can also try it at home. And for this experiment we have two children and in front of them we have two plants called basils. And for step one these children are going to label one plant desert and label the other plant forest. And then they are going to put these plants in a sunny place. For step two, these children are going to water the desert plant once 
and water the forest plants every other day. For step 3, these kids are going to observe these plants every day for one week. So, let's predict what each plant will look like after one week. What do you think? To answer this question, let's move on to page 112 where we are going to draw the plants after one week. So, what do you think will happen to the desert plant? Very good! The desert plant is going to wilt after one week because it did not get the water it needs from the place it lives in. So let's go ahead and draw a wilted plant in the first box. What about the forest plant that has been watered every other day? Excellent! The forest plant will remain healthy because it is getting the water it needs. So let's draw a healthy plant in the second box. For the third box, we are going to make a claim. So we will write that a basil, like the example we used in the experiment above, or other forest plants, cannot live in a desert because it would not get enough water. And that's why the plant wilted when watered only once. And for the fourth box, we are going to draw a wilted plant. So the plant wilted because it didn't get enough water. Well done, everybody. And finally, let's move on to page 113 in our science book where we can see a forest scene. And in this scene, we will find out how many trees fell. So, let's go ahead and count the tree stumps together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six trees fell. And now our question is, how many trees should the people plant? What do you think? Very good! They should plant six trees. And our second question is to draw an animal getting what it needs from a tree. So what do you think? What should we draw? Excellent! We can draw a bird in a nest. The tree helps the bird get what it needs. The bird gets its shelter from the tree. Well done! Good job, everybody! Have a great day! Bye-bye!